The Introvert's Edge podcast was designed to create a dialogue around introversion, to stimulate a discussion around our disadvantages, how we overcome those disadvantages, and what we consider our introvert's edge. Together, we're finally going to confront the stigma around introversion, showing that we're not second-class citizens. We're just different, and we need to embrace that. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Introverts Edge podcast. I have to admit, I'm, I'm ecstatic about inviting my next guest, and mainly because she has done something that I have been telling organizations to do now for years, and everybody thinks that this is something that they won't be able to get buy-in in their organization for. And my next guest has actually done this. She's actually created an employee resource group for introverts. That's right, a corporation, or I should say for her, in her case, an association because she works for American Heart Association that has actually agreed that having a support group for introverts would be helpful to the mission of the organization and the communication and dynamic of, of the team culture there. And I'm just, I'm so ecstatic to see this happen. And I, I, I want to go into depth with her on, on how she was able to do this and how it has worked. But it's also important that you know that she's been working with this association now for nearly 20, well, over 20, over 20 years, as well as won a whole bunch of marketing awards and diversity and inclusion awards as well. So it, it's so vitally important to have people like this on my podcast, which is why I'm so ecstatic to welcome uh, Toya Honoré. Toya, welcome to the show. I'm ecstatic to have you. Thank you, Matthew. I'm so happy to be here. Well, I'm ecstatic to dive into this topic because you've done something that I have been advocating for for a long, long period of time. And you know, we, we, we spent a, a long time talking um, before this. And it, it originally, you found it a little bit hard to, to get this idea as something that people would buy into. And then you got people through that. And so I, I'm really interested to dive deep into this, but... I want to take a a step back before we even get to that, because obviously you've had a very successful career in in the you're in the heart association yourself, and obviously there was a time probably that you realised you were an introvert, and then before you became this you know titan in your in your own industry, you had to really find your own way to success. And I I just love to understand a little bit more about your personal journey and how introversion really impacted your life. So my entire life, people have always talked about how quiet I am, but I've always been successful doing my work. Um, And early in my career, it was hard for me to be in meetings and to get a word in edgewise with all of the extroverts talking. And I would sit there and wait for that little pause to say something. And by the time that would happen, someone would have said what I was thinking to say. And so then I wouldn't say anything at all. So you can imagine I could go meeting after meeting without really saying anything, and that became a problem. So even though I was getting the work done and I was excelling, my supervisors were saying that I was too quiet. I was too quiet in meetings, and I'm in marketing and communications. And so you can imagine I was probably one or two people in a department who were introverted and everybody else was extroverted, which made it even more difficult to survive in that environment. And I was working overtime on trying to figure out how to get my voice heard. And so I read all these books. I mean, everything from, um, you know, where you sit in the room, if you're sitting next to the person who leads the meeting, you get the halo effect that you're talking more to, um, you know, how your body language in the meeting, all of that, just trying to figure out how do I appear that I'm talking more, even if I'm not. Um, and so eventually I just, I, it, it was wearing me down and I had gotten really, really drained. And I remember specifically, I remember this, this specific day I was in my performance review and I had excellent across the board But my supervisor wanted me to be a different way. She wanted my personality to be something that I just wasn't. And I was trying so hard to be this personality that I just wasn't. And I just decided, you know, maybe this isn't the place for me. Maybe I need to be somewhere else. And I had been there like 10 years at this point. And so she 
she was like, no, no, it's fine. It's fine. You'll be okay. But I was so drained and I told her, you know, I can continue to try to be what you want me to be, but it's really wearing me out. And if this organization is just really, um, if they are serious about introversion, not introversion, diversity, then introversion needs to be considered because the introverted staff is just being worn out, <laughs> especially in communications. You know, I, I think it's just such an important thing to say. I mean, you're now, you know, a VP of marketing and communication. So I mean, for everyone listening, this story has a really happy ending. It, not only that, you know, one of the things I love about your story is you're now supporting other people. You didn't get to success and then say, you know what, I'm now going to call myself an extrovert, which is a lot of what I see introverts do. They And it's not because they're doing it on purpose. It's that they feel like their aspiration is to become an extrovert, which I find leaves people exhausted and drained at the end of the day, as opposed to leaning into their introverted strengths. But I, I, th I really think that like, when people hear about the, the concept of marketing, they're imagining now being in that room of like the TV show Mad Men and all of that really strong personality. And here we've got this, this quiet person that has things to contribute, but they're just not the loudest voice in the room. And I, I can understand the support that you wished you probably had. That you're now providing... To, to other people, but I understand also how tough a sell that can be to an organization, especially I'm assuming an association that lives off funders and donors and does important work because every time you decide to do something like this, it's taking resources away from other things. And I, I love the fact that you've decided to really go into, it's a diversity topic because I, I absolutely believe that it is and it should be part of that discussion. I guess what I'd love to understand is what initial conversations did you have? What pushback did you get? And how did you get that breakthrough of, okay, we're willing to entertain this? Initially, I think they were looking at it from the standpoint of we're just helping the introverts and not necessarily looking at it from a standpoint of how introverts and extroverts could be working better together if they understood one another and understood the personalities and if leadership understood the personalities of introverts versus extroverts and what made them tick and what they needed to do their best work. Um, so that was really one of the main reasons that I think they allowed me to do this. Um, also, you know, we pride ourselves on being a, an organization that thinks that diversity, equity, and inclusion is very important. And we have all different types of employee resource groups. Um, and I wanted them to see that personality type is as much a diversity issue as anything else that we focus on. And so they gave me the chance and I'm very, you know, thankful for that because I really did not want to leave the organization. I love this organization. As you can see, I've been here over 20 years. Um, and I, I felt like I needed to try to make a difference in my environment where it was going to help other people to understand the personality type and how it can support the mission. Absolutely. And I think it is so important to have that dialogue as we're trying to get the best out of our people. And the truth is that, and I see this happen with big tech companies right through to small association groups where the extroverts and the introverts are on the same team, but there's so much conflict or there's so much unsaid that leads to degradation of productivity, people feeling isolated, left out, and that affects presenteeism. And all of this costs an organization money, and yet they don't realize it because that's just the way it's always been. What things have you noticed since you've brought this conversation to the forefront that has improved the organization in general that has allowed you to keep, because this isn't a new initiative. This has been going on years now and no one would do that if there wasn't buy-in, but also if there wasn't a higher level outcome that the organization was seeing. Yeah. So we focus in the group, we really focus on the benefits that, um, or the superpowers, if you will, 
that introverts bring to the organization. We don't focus so much on things that we need to change or, you know, um, strive to be. We do that in our private little setting because obviously we all need growth. Um, but when we are doing things that has the entire organization as an audience, we talk about the superpowers that AHA, I mean, that the, the, um, the lines that art brings, the introverts. Um, and one of the things that we did, we talked with HR because we wanted to make sure that when job descriptions are being shared externally or they're recruiting people, um, that there was not a bias around the introverts. Um, I am an introvert, and sometimes when I'm interviewing people, I can easily tell if they're introverted or extroverted. And so I have to think about the skill set they're bringing, um, how excited they probably feel on the inside, because as an introvert, our faces don't always show that we're really excited. And if we did not bring that to the attention of the other leaders in the organization or HR in the organization, um, we may have missed a lot of great candidates just because they didn't feel that they were interested in the role because their faces didn't show it. You know, that's such an important, in such an important point because I can tell you, I used, my interviews used to always last like 45 minutes to an hour and everybody else's interviews, in, I, I found like 20, 30 minutes, oh, I got a good sense of who they are or they'll do group interviews. And I always felt like my best staff members a lot of the times, I didn't feel like I had a connection with them in the first 30 minutes, or I felt like they weren't answering the, the standard questions the way that they would need to to get the job. But I would explore their resume, and I would ask more questions, and I'd be creative, and then I would find there was like this diamond in the rough answer that I wasn't expecting. And I was like, wow, this person, they don't, this, this isn't the job for them. This is the job for them. Well, let's create a role for them because this person can provide a huge amount of value. To those people that perhaps evaluate people in group settings or do like submit your video quickly on the fly, let's keep, you know, keep a solid recording, that are judging people, let's face it, judging the book by the cover, what recommendations would, would you provide to them to think differently about what they're doing? And what things have you employed as an organization to do it differently? Well, one thing we do have that video, or we had the video um, where the person would initially give an intro of themselves through the video. Um, they may not necessarily have known what the questions were in advance, but we made sure that they could stop it and re-record it as many times as they wanted. Because at first I think it was just However it is, it's how it is, and it just goes. But as an introvert, you need to put some thought into the answer. You probably are aware of how you look, and so you have to pick up your energy and smile and do all these things um, that maybe an extrovert does not. <laughs> and so when we spoke with HR, we wanted to make sure that that process was going to be fair and not create a bias for introverts who are interviewing. And then we also talk to leadership about when an introvert is in interviewing, how they may not appear to be as excited about the role, but listen for words that they say. If they say they're excited about the role, regardless to how they look on the face, they're probably excited about the role. Take that. <laughs> and so I have been so excited when people, because I do a lot of interviewing, and when people that I'm interviewing with, um, when the executive comes back and says to me, I could tell that they were inter introverted and I took that into consideration and I think this is going to be a great hire. That just makes me so excited because I know that Lions at Heart is making a difference within the organization. That That's perfect. I, I, I really believe that what you're saying can transform the quality of the staff that people have it inside their organization or association because they're actually, it's, it's forcing them. And I, I mean, it's not really just about introversion, is it? You're forcing your interviewers to give people the benefit of the doubt, to give them an opportunity to show their best self. So while of course it's tapered in introversion, it's, it's really much more, it's a much broader requirement to give people the opportunity to present themselves in a manner that they, they're comfortable with. And I, I know for myself, 
you know, I recorded a whole bunch of videos yesterday for a new summit uh, that we're, we're launching called the Introverted, uh, sorry, the, uh, the Introverted Seller Summit. And the first video, it was horrible. And I'm passionate about it. I love the fact that we're launching this and providing so many great speakers to help introverted sellers realize that they can sell and small business owners realize that they can sell. Yet I still couldn't figure out how to express that on the first take. Now, a lot of people will see the final product and they'll be like, wow, it's easy for him, it's not for me. It wasn't, it was like 16 takes before I got it right. But that now it's right, it's right forever. And I think that a lot of people, when they're judging somebody on an interview, they're putting them under test conditions, but life's not really like that, is it? Like if you're sending an email, you can you can edit it. If you're you know going into a meeting, you can plan and prepare and think through the questions that might come up and, and get ready for it. What what results have you seen from those hires come into the organization as a result of the fact that they probably wouldn't have been given the opportunity otherwise? Have they have, have some of those people become really strong players within the organization? Absolutely, because as you're talking about, you have the opportunity to write things and get your your mind wrapped around it. So introverts tend to be good writers. Um, we are storytellers at the organization, so we need people who are good writers who can tell the story well. We have an editorial department, and I think a lot of those people are probably introverts. Um, you know, and in communications, a lot of times, and I'm speaking from my own personal experience, when you go in those meetings with either the media or with corporate sponsors, I tend to be the person that people call after the meeting to build the relationship with. And I don't know if it's because I, first of all, I am an open book, so I say things that other people might not feel comfortable saying. You know, if I'm somewhere and I'm nervous, I'm going to verbally verbalize that I'm nervous. And that breaks down the wall and that helps people to bond with you because they're probably nervous too. Um, and as an introvert, I just happen to do that all the time. I might even tell people I'm an introvert because then that breaks down the wall and that helps them to understand my personality. And so a lot of times people will call me and build that relationship with me outside of the larger group because they feel more comfortable. Yeah, that's that's powerful. I mean, scientifically proven that introverts create deeper relationships than extroverts. And not, not that they can't learn to. It's just the things that we have in spades, like empathy and active listening, allows us to be able to do that uh, at, a, at a deeper level. And while sometimes we're, we struggle a little bit at the beginning, we foster those deeper relationships. And just and for everyone listening, I want you to remember that introversion and extroversion it's just where you draw your energy from. That is it. We all have our burdens to bear. Extroverts can learn to empathize. They can learn to actively listen. Their skill sets, they're not easy sometimes for some especially extreme extroverts to learn, but they can. The difference is that we introverts believe that there's a lot of skill sets we can't learn because of the gift of gap barrier. And that's what we need to realize. That, that doesn't actually exist. That is a thing that we have created. It is the world's worst negative self-talk and it gets in our way because it stops us looking for strategies that allow us to lean into our introverted strengths, which allow us to excel. I'm actually interested though about your organization because I work with a lot of organizations that have a lot of introverts. So you'd expect that the, the social stigma around introversion had gone away, you know, but I still find that there is one. And, you know, I, I, I did a survey at the AAISP, the American Association of Inside Sales Professionals. And I just surveyed all the highest level sales leaders. I was, I was speaking to all the highest level sales leaders in the, really, if you work for a major company, you're part of that group. And I asked them just a simple question, are you introverted or extroverted? And I left it as an open, write your answer, rather than a yes, no, uh, or sorry, introversion, extroversion. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to see what would happen. And the number of people that would say things like, oh, I was introverted, but don't worry, I'm extroverted now. Like, firstly, like that's something we can change. And then secondly, like introversion is a, is a bad thing. And then others that just really didn't know. And I thought to myself, well, if, you're like, if I don't know, how do I support my team? And if I don't know about myself, then I, I, I probably don't know about you know, my team members. And from a diversity perspective, 
people of different cultures, different backgrounds, different skin color, it's easier to tell that and make sure that they're supported and, and gender, uh, absolutely. But when it comes to introversion, extroversion, that not knowing, I feel, is, is the, a play on team dynamic. Have you found that since bringing this to the forefront in your organization, one, that it became more socially acceptable and people are now not seeing it as a bad thing, but then two, that understanding has allowed everybody to help each other be their best version of themselves? Absolutely. Absolutely. And that was the goal, actually. Um, now in meetings, leaders understand you know, how introverts may be sitting there trying to break into the conversation so they understand that maybe I need to call on this person and, and hear what they have to say if they're not able to break in themselves. Um, also, it's funny because one of our last um, panel discussions that we had across the organization as a whole, I had mentioned how early in my career I was having that problem trying to break into the conversation and most of my colleagues were extroverted and they were talking over me and, you know, my voice wasn't that loud. And after that, a few of them emailed me and apologized. <laughs> they said, oh, I had no idea. I'm so sorry. I'm sure I was probably one of those people who were talking over you. <laughs> And I just, I just thought it was so endearing that they, they apologized and, um, not that they had to, but I just thought it was so nice. That means that they were really listening and they really understood, um, you know, how an introvert is in those settings. Also, I think leadership is more aware of introverts now, actually lines at heart, the ERG, we typed up, um, what we wish leaders would know about introverts and we sent that out we do things like that every now and then and we sent that out through our hr newsletter um and so they are aware of sending information before a meeting you know in time so that the introverts in the room can have time to think about it um different things like that and not just thinking oh this person has nothing to say and this person is just too quiet and they're not adding value but also thinking about the value that they do bring that is different from the value that the extroverts bring and all of us working together, um, the value that we bring to the organization as a whole. That's, that's, that's powerful. And I feel like what you're really cr creating is a dynamic that gets to really lead into people's strengths and allow people to feel comfortable in their own space as well. And especially with unemployment being what it is right now, getting great staff is tough. Keeping them is even tougher. If you're not doing these things, if your organization isn't doing these sorts of things, then especially right now, this is a great opportunity to suggest that they do because this is a this is the time to get these initiatives and these agendas made uh, and a popular to make popular and really push these agendas forward. And if I can help you, Oh, or if any of my introverted network can support you in, in these initiatives, they're important. And, you know, I, I feel that this is going to be a podcast, a blog, and an initiative because it is such a vitally critical piece that is missing from so many organizations. And the last question, and I know we're running over time here, but I, I guess the, the question that I would, I, I would love to ask, just for those people that are, okay, I want to to get one of these initiatives going. And, you know, I, I saw on your LinkedIn profile before I interviewed you that I want to do this, either do it, but I'm scared to do this. Well, do it anyway, just do it scared. And I feel like you pushed this agenda of creating this initiative. You probably did it scared. For those people that are listening, even if they're just a low, you know, on the totem pole employee, but they feel like this initiative is important. How would you recommend that they do it scared? What are the three steps, four steps, or the first important step that they should take in order to actually get the outcome or at least the starting blocks, you know, get past the starting blocks. I will have to say when I started this, I was low on a totem pole. So I didn't have a lot of pull within the organization necessarily. But with, with anything, I feel like you just have to, if you feel it strongly, you definitely must step out and do it because that is your soul pulling you to do the thing that you are meant to do. You may not know how it's going to turn out. You may not have the exact plan as to what it's going to look like, but you have your personal experience of what happened to you 
and you know that we are all connected and so it is happening to other people and I think you just really have to help the organization to see how it's not just about helping the introverts to rise it's about helping the organization as a whole to work better together and to achieve its mission and so basically this group is not just for introverts but it's also for allies and so you know making sure that we are talking about the challenges that we have as in, as introverts, but also working with the organization to understand what we need and how we can work with others. But within the group, we are also working on ourselves because we can always grow and there always needs to be some kind of tweaking that you can do to have your best self. I think that's really helpful for the people listening. And I, and I will say, if you're listening to this and you've listened to a lot of the episodes of the Introverts Edge podcast, then I'm hoping that that's added real value to you. That's probably also added real value to the organization. I e. you've delivered better results or you've been more productive or you've been able to do something for that organization that is meaningful. Now, remember that depending on the industry, there's probably likely to be probably half of your organizational employees that are introverted. Now, I was blown away. Like you imagine that they would gravitate to tech, but the number of people that sell insurance that I know that are introverted, you'd be surprised how many organizations you might feel like you're alone, but you're not. And if it's made a difference for you, if you can just speak to that story of understanding your introversion has allowed you to achieve this, and maybe everybody else could too, that's an agenda that you can push. And I, I really feel that you need to take the first step to do that because if you don't, who will? And you're taking this initiative by listening to this podcast. So embolden yourself to, to take that leap because it's benefiting an organization already. Point them to this podcast, get them to listen to this or you know use this as a resource if they don't believe you, but they will. They just need somebody to outwardly say it because it's probably never occurred to them. Now, I need to finish uh, this interview with a question that's always the most important question to me, which is for people that are introverted, we often think about our weaknesses. We think about the things we can't do. So it's vitally important for me that I focus on our edge, our strength. What would you consider your introvert's edge? My edge would probably be always being ready because I have to do so much preparation in advance of every meeting, every conversation usually. Um, so I'm always ready. I'm always thinking about questions people may be asking and looking up the answer before we have that conversation. Um, so I'm always ready. That That's a terrific piece of, of guidance, I think, for others as well, because for those people that think that this uh, this interview was organic, there was about 20, 25 minutes worth of planning and dialogue about how we were going to structure this interview to provide the best impact for you, uh, the listener, before we got started. Because we introverts can be dynamic with a little bit of planning and preparation. I would have been less so, and I feel that most people, most guests would be as well without that planning and preparation. So please lean into that because that is something that is definitely one of our introverts' edges, our ability to plan and prepare. But we're, we're at the end of our interview, and I have to say I've loved having you on this show, and thank you for being so open to sharing so much great information. If people wanted to find out more about you, your association, and and even had questions about the, uh, the concept of the initiative itself, where would people find out more about you? They can connect with me on LinkedIn, I think would probably be the best place, and it's Toya, T-O-I-Y-A, middle initial M. Last name is Adore, so that's Honor with an E. And then so far as the organization, they can go to heart.org. That's terrific. Well, thank you for sharing that. And for those people that uh, have never sponsored anything or donated anything, if you're getting value out of this podcast, spend that money there. Go and appreciate that all association and, 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 and give them value because I can tell you for a, a person that has had heart disease in my family, you know, it's such an important initiative and I, I would love to to see more funds more funds go that way. And for those people that have questions, 
Of course, I will do my best to, to help answer them. And if you have them, feel free to send them my way and we'll try and create extra podcasts. We might even get Toya back to answer some of those questions. But you just got given a, a wonderful resource and an offer to connect on LinkedIn. And I would suggest that if this is an initiative that's important to you, take them up on that. And we will uh, take Toya up on that. And I will uh, put her LinkedIn profile link in the show notes for people to access as well. But for today, thank you so much for joining us. And we look forward to seeing you in the next episode of the Introverts Edge podcast. Cheers. Thank you. I'm Matthew Pollard, the author of The Introverts Edge to Networking. I'm on a mission to help introverts to be proud of who we are. For the first time, you'll learn a process for networking that feels comfortable and authentic to you as an introvert. A process that doesn't feel salesy or awkward in any way. I saw at least half of my board members, three in particular that I can think of, that now are so comfortable in literally going up to people at events, all of a sudden I can see the confidence. Most of the networking books and literature out there really focus on hardcore tactics designed for extroverts. As introverts, we're different and we need to embrace that. We need a system that allows us to channel our natural introverted strengths into the networking room. You will learn how to be successful at face-to-face -face networking and a masterful online networker on your terms. It's beautifully written and it provides tremendous value. So I, I, I am honored to, to say, folks, if you haven't looked at the book, you really need to check out this guy's book. It's, it's excellent. It gives you that confidence to truly be yourself, knowing that you're going to be presenting yourself in a way that is authentic and will also really resonate with the person that you're talking with. One of the things you'll love about the Introvert's Edge to Networking is it's jam-packed full of more than 20 stories of introverts just like you. People that have likely started in much tougher spots than where you are right now and how they've leveraged the strategies that you'll be learning to obtain phenomenal career and small business success. I was about to give up on my business. The results started coming in right away. In fact, a year later, the Chamber of Commerce awarded me the business of the year. <laughs> you need to go read his book because everything he does is what people need, whether they're an introvert or not. I've been fortunate to receive endorsements from some exceptional introverts like Neil Patel and Ivan Meisner, the founder of the world's largest networking group, BNI. What I love about the Introvert's Edge is that it talks about the things that make an introvert successful. The introvert's edge to networking is going to destroy all of the barriers that you have around whether success in networking is possible for you. Now I'm up to kind of five figures, you know, triple my prices or more. It was like the deals just kept coming in and coming in. And it, I mean, it was incredible. Like I had never seen anything like it before. I was able to triple my revenue and that's happened within six months. We've gone from 10 million a year to 20 million a year. I wrote The Introvert's Edge to Networking after the success of the first in the Introvert's Edge series, which focused on sales. I decided that it was just as important, perhaps even more so, that we had a networking book that was designed to help us as introverts dominate in the networking room and in online networking that was specifically written for us. So if you're an introvert, don't delay. Head to theintrovertsedge.com forward slash networking to get access to the first chapter of my new book completely for free today.